understand. What's going on? We're heading to Libya. When? Now. The United States has no diplomatic relationships with Libya. Once inside Libya, these officers could expect no help from our government. If they were caught and their identities uncovered, the United States would have lost our one and final opportunity to stop the Mukhabarat attacks. Less than 24 hours after leaving Egypt, CIA officers David Azim and Jamal Khalid enter Libya posing as businessmen. They travel to an outdoor cafe on the outskirts of Benghazi. Here, they will meet the Iraqi code clerk for their first intelligence briefing. Case officer Azim needed some way to identify himself to the code clerk. He carried with him a soccer ball keychain. His colleague Jamal provided counter surveillance of the meeting. This code clerk related that a high-level Mukhabarat operative named Masoud al-Sahaf was going to be meeting with five other operatives to discuss terrorist strikes against U.S. interests. Sahaf was well known to the CIA. He was involved in several assassinations of opposition leaders, and he personally participated in the torture and killing of political prisoners. So needless to say, the CIA was very interested in collecting as much intelligence as they could about his intentions. <laughs> When Officer Azim pressed the Iraqi code clerk for details of the meeting, he suddenly became uncooperative. He refused to give either the exact time or the location of the meeting until he was first exfiltrated from Libya. Officer Azim had a major problem. If he complies and the code clerk disappears, the Mukhabarat will almost certainly become suspicious and cancel the meeting. Officers Azim and Khalid only had one option. They had to kill the clerk in order to save his life. CIA officers have secretly entered Benghazi, Libya. Their mission, to obtain intelligence on Iraqi terrorist strikes targeting U.S. interests worldwide. Officers Azim and Khalid had a serious dilemma. We've got a problem. We need to come up with a plan. Their intelligence source, a code clerk working for Iraq's secret service, has refused to cooperate until he's safely removed from Libya. We cannot just remove him. That will only make them more suspicious and they might cancel the meeting. What if something happened to him? An accident or something? What do you mean? We could fake his death and transport him out of the country as a dead body. The officers in this case came up with a bold and extremely high-risk plan. In order to get the code clerk out of the country without alarming Iraqi intelligence, they decided to fake his death. His name is Dr. Muhammad Abdullah. I worked with him in two previous occasions. He never let me down. I think he can help us in this situation, if the price is right. In order to successfully fake the code clerk's death, the officers will need outside assistance. They contact a local doctor on the CIA payroll. 
This doctor had served as a support asset for the CIA in the past. He wasn't used very often, but when he was, he delivered. خليني أوضح لك إحنا توصلنا ليه دي عبارة عن أسماك مسممة وقاتلة فعلا لكل التترو توكسين هي قاتلة بس الكمية المزبوطة اللي تتحط منها هي اللي بتؤكد إنه حتى من مفاوض. The doctor provided the operations officer with a powerful neurotoxin derived from a blowfish. Given in proper doses, it reduces respiration and heart rate to a point where it's virtually undetectable. It causes the victim to appear dead. The drug is placed in a cigarette and given to the officers along with an additional supply in case the effects need to be extended. They will now take the dose to the code clerk's hotel. Faking someone's death is not quite as easy as Hollywood makes it seem. And quite frankly, it really isn't an inadvisable strategy. But in this case, because the intelligence the code clerk possessed was so valuable, the operations officers felt they had no other choice. As planned, at 5 p.m. that evening, the code clerk administers the drug and waits for it to take effect. This was an extremely sophisticated plan. It called for split-second timing. One mistake, and both the officers and the code clerk could end up dead. The CIA officers posing as ambulance attendants parked a few blocks away from the code clerk's hotel. They had also electronically tapped the hotel's phone line so they could monitor all the calls going in and out of the hotel. I'll call the hotel. Good idea. Hello? After about 20 minutes, Officer Azim called the hotel's front desk and reported a disturbance in the code clerk's room. I'm afraid there's nothing wrong. Maybe you can't hear anything. Thank you, Azim. Bye.